oldguytalks.com is all about being a better man. Join me on this kick-ass journey. Exclusive stuff for members only in the Old Guy Cave. Opt in now. This is Oris the Old Guy from www.oldguytalks.com here with Lucian, Lucian Wintrich here in the house. Uh, Lucian is a conservative Trump supporter, and he also happens to be gay, among other things. And uh, he's kind of got a little history about him, enthralled uh, in, in all, uh, all those little details. But before we get into that kind of stuff, I want to find out a little bit about who Lucian is. And uh, you're originally from Pennsylvania and moved to New York City. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself so that our audience gets to know you a bit. Um, well, yeah, I'm originally from uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I, I went to school in upstate New York, though. So I've sort of been in and out of the city uh, since college. And yeah, I, I moved back to New York in January to uh, accept a job in, uh, in advertising at a large firm here. And unfortunately, they, we, I guess, ideological differences struck. And uh -huh. they let me go back in August. Um, so yeah, since then I've, I've been able to uh, devote more of my time to, uh, to helping Donald Trump and his campaign and uh -huh. I've been involved in a number of various political projects. We, uh, I threw the, or I was one of four people to throw the wake up party at the RNC. And most recently we had the first conservative art show here in New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw, I saw the video of that. It looked like a, a fun event with Milo and, and, uh, and everyone else there. So, you know, uh, most people would consider that uh, it's kind of unusual for somebody who happens to be gay would be conservative. And, and how did you end up being a conservative? When did you, when did you, when, when did you come out as a conservative? Well, probably, probably college. I went to Bard College, which is one of the most liberal schools in the nation. Uh-huh. And... I, at the time, sort of thought that I, uh, myself, was liberal just because that was sort of the popular. I didn't really give it a second thought, although my beliefs have always been largely libertarian. I, I do believe in, in sort of personal freedom, uh, which comes with personal responsibility. And I tend to, I mean, if you've ever uh, tried to get anything done at the post office, you know how inefficient government is. Exactly. So it's, it was sort of, uh, I don't know, I started questioning the, the blindsided liberalism that I was taught at Bard, and I had the very fortunate uh, experience of studying under Walter Russell Mead, who might have been the only conservative professor there. And uh, yeah, so it sort of, it sort of uh, spiraled from there, I guess. I, um, Reagan's uh, autobiography in American Life definitely helped me out. Okay. Um, and Barry, Barry Goldwater's uh, Conscience of a Conservative is one of my favorite books. Okay. Wow. You really, you really uh, got that main, mainlining, basically, conservative. Yeah. So, uh, so that's great. That's great. So now, because uh, I'm an old guy, and uh, I don't understand a lot of words sometimes that are used on the Internet. So yeah. tell me, what's a twink? <laughs> um, well, a twink is a... Um, See, it's 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 almost like an essay. It's it's a uh, maybe eighteen to twenty five year old um, sort of uh, boyish looking gay guy, I guess. Oh, okay, all right. Is that okay? So, all right. Okay. Well, like I said, I, I there's you know. Uh, since I started this journey of uh, becoming a blogger on the internet, I've learned a lot of things, and there's a lot of vocabulary that I'm not familiar with, so I have to always ask. So you had this art show at the RNC, and. Um, the Twinks for Trump. Tell us a little bit about how that was received and who came and all that stuff. Oh, well, we had a, oh my gosh, we had a wonderful group of speakers there. We had uh, Pam Geller, we had Milo Yiannopoulos, uh, Geert Wielders, I can never pronounce his name, uh, but he's fantastic. He's a, a po um, politician from Denmark. And who else did we have? We had uh, Sonny Johnson. And yet Gavin was there? At the well, at the art show, we're at the uh, the RNC party. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, at the art show. That's right. I, I don't know. Oh, if yeah, well, the, yeah, the art show was uh, Miley Yiannopoulos, Martin right. Scorelli, okay. uh, Gavin yep. Kiss. Sure. Yeah. So, so, so at the at the uh, at the RNC party, um, one of the things that you that you'd mentioned was was the kind of support that you got from uh, traditional Republicans. So, can you tell me a little bit about that? 
I mean, I will say it is very funny to read all these uh, conservative blogs and publications defining the word twink. I've kind of enjoyed that as a... <laughs> um, but yeah, I, the overwhelmingly, a lot of conservatives have applauded uh, my efforts. There, there have been a few like super evangelical folks who uh, actually, you know, the the absolute, and it's it's kind of nice, but it's sort of the worst that I've gotten is, oh, I, I disapprove of the lifestyle, but um, any any conservative is is good in my book. Mm-hmm. So for the yeah, for the most part, there's been a lot of applause from the right. And that, oddly enough, uh, which I really wasn't expecting, a lot of people on the left, uh, especially here in New York, have met my efforts with uh, incredible animosity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, in addition, in addition to uh, sort of hounding my employer until I was uh, finally let go, yeah. they, uh, I mean, the threats from the left have just been streaming in relatively nonstop for the past couple of months, which is kind of funny too, I think, because a lot of them, they they don't really understand politics or the American political structure. Mm-hmm. They just they just know that, oh, if you're gay, you're not supposed to like Trump. You're not supposed to be conservative or a Republican. Yeah, yeah. And, you're, uh, you're, I mean, you're the wrong kind of gay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's frustrating. And I, I don't know, I, I hope that uh, whichever direction this election goes, um, that we've all at least served to break down some of those identity po- those identity politics walls mm. where people will uh, feel feel like yeah they can they can have whatever uh, ascribe to whatever ideology or political beliefs that they that they find most rational um, mm. and for me that is conservatism and uh, and yeah their their identity itself shouldn't play a role in that yeah. Um- you know, the, uh, the intolerance in the left is something that uh, uh, I've seen for many ages, for, uh, for ages. I, I remember even seeing it like in the 80s and the 70s and things like that. Um, what, uh, you know, amongst your friends when they found out you're conservative and all this stuff, what, what happened there? Because you mentioned that there were some people that said, oh, they can't be seen with you and things like that. What, what was that all about? Well, <laughs> So it's weird because all of my friends have, have known that I've been conservative for most of my uh, adult life. But yeah, this election, you know how every year, and I think this election is particularly bad just in terms of uh, that sort of policing of thought. So I was, it was fine when I was, when I was uh, conservative and I, I, I discussed it during cocktail parties and dinner parties and whatever else. But they, they saw it as going too far that then I, I sort of applied those beliefs to a larger public platform. Mm. Yeah, I think probably all, most of your most of the things that started happening to you is when you got, you know, you kind of got on the ra- on people's radar. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this election is kind of interesting. It, it's it's the, the, the most unusual election I've ever experienced in my lifetime. Um, and one of the things I've noticed is that there is a fear of people to let people know that you support Donald Trump. Uh, I, in, uh, I'm, I live in, in Phoenix, Arizona, and usually at this time of the year, there's tons of bumper stickers on cars. Yeah. And you don't see that. You don't, you don't see it because people are gonna afraid they're going to get their car key or something. It's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's incredible. And I'm really, I'm really hoping that, uh, I don't know, a lot of people, because, you know, even people on the left, nobody likes Hillary Clinton. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, here in New York, it's, you'll be hard pressed to find a single person who's an outspoken Hillary supporter. Mm-hmm. And then obviously it's even harder and rarer to find a, an outspoken Trump supporter. But I, I just think that, that Trump has managed to mobilize people and, and support uh, a certain a element of support that Hillary Clinton doesn't have. And I, mm-hmm. I hope that, that does translate to, uh, to the polls. So we'll see how, how that ends up working out. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the I think uh, there is a little bit underreporting in the polls. I hope there is. Uh, certainly, the last few days have been very interesting with the uh, uh, email investigation by the FBI being opened up again. Oh, that's uh, good. That, that was a that was a gift. <laughs> Andy Weiner, the the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I do feel bad for the guy. Um, I mean, he's he obviously has some sort of uh, like psychological affliction. To- oh yeah. 
I mean, he was, a, or at least a, uh, for, for the left, he was like a star, rising star politician. And to sacrifice all of that just because, uh, I don't know, because he, he's obsessed with sending, sending crotch pictures to, to women. It's insane. It doesn't make any sense to me. You get, I mean, he, I mean, especially been caught once. He just, he, he's got a disease. He, he's got a mental disease, and he, and he, and there is, he, he certainly has not seeked any treatment for it. And it's, it's, it's sad, uh, sad because there's a kid involved and all that stuff, and, and, it's, and it's very, very unfortunate. So, uh, so now in uh, in the community, um, there were some people that were not very happy with your twinks for Trump. Uh, mm-hmm. And they kind of they use some words describing it, and, and can you want to talk a little bit about that? I guess you know one of the words that was described in one of the logs was pedophilia, and it's, it's kind of yeah. like really I kinda, well, okay. I mean, it, which, yeah, which is kind of hilarious because actually a lot of the models um, that I've shot with have shot with a lot of other relatively well-known New York photographers. Right. And uh, when when yeah when they're engaged in those shoots. Then it's it's applauded uh, applauded by the left, and uh, there's a oh how edgy, how incredible, um, and then yeah, you throw one in a Trump hat, and it's all of a sudden it's pedophilia and whatever the hell. They, uh, oh, and they also said it's overwhelmingly white. Why don't I have more uh, minorities in the shoot? Um, and I actually I do have a Hispanic kid in the shoot. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. They're always gonna they're always gonna look for something. I was very considering some of who some of the models are though and who else they've shot with i was kind of shocked that they that they uh went that route especially mm-hmm. when you know if you um uh what is it i think salon well uh, i don't know if they stopped doing this but for a while they were publishing articles like defending pedophiles and uh, so pedophiles they're they're uh, right now they're friends of the left not the right at all yeah, um, yeah they're being pedophiles are typically applauded by the left and then uh, they just, they think, uh, because it is still, it's a, um, I don't know, it's a way, it's a way of uh, shutting down, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. You know? No, nobody, nobody talks very much about Bill Clinton and, uh, wasn't it, Jeffrey Epstein and Orgy Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, if you look at, if you look at, um, oh my gosh, any of those, kids, there's, there's such degrees of, of weird hypocrisy where the people on the left are actually sexual predators, are actually committing crimes. And their way of sort of diffusing that, it's an interesting strategy, but they'll just, they'll say, oh, well, um, this doesn't really go on on the right. Uh, for the most part, we on the right, we tend to be far more moral um, people because we do believe in, in personal responsibility. And uh, when you do limit government, it does put more, more power in the hands of the individual. Sure. And I think a lot of conservatives understand that. So there's, there is uh, far more, I think, morality and, and just naturally <laughs> good behavior on the right. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's it, it, that, that's interesting. Who, um, um, you know, I guess a lot of people said they couldn't be seen around you. Who, uh, who are the people that kind of, and I know you're not going to mention names, but who are, the, who are the people that kind of stood by you that you kind of were, su- were surprised about at this point? Um, well, Sophia Lamar, who's a, uh, she was a big part of the uh, club scene in New York in the 80s and 90s. Uh-huh. She's maintained a very good, uh, she, uh, um, she's a 60-year-old uh, trans woman, actually. Mm-hmm. And she's been a, a big advocate for me, just, she's a liberal, but uh, sort of on the grounds of uh, freedom of speech and expression, and she actually escaped uh, communist Cuba. Okay. And, yeah, she said that this, I mean, she's been totally taken aback by it. She said that this sort of, uh, yeah, the policing of thought and social ostracization, it's something that, that you'd expect in a, in a country like Cuba, but never in America. And it's, it, it is kind of disgusting that we've become so um, blindsidedly partisan as a country mm-hmm. that it's almost considered acceptable to, uh, to ostracize uh, a gay kid for being a Trump supporter or to, to key a car because it has a Trump sticker on it. Um, I mean, if you, if you look at, uh, you know, people on the left love saying, oh, Trump supporters are so violent. Um, first of all, we've seen from the James O'Keefe videos that mm-hmm. those were set up encounters by the left. Right. Probably because there's so much violence going on against Trump supporters, which wasn't set up. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> again, it's, 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 uh, it is weird. And this is, again, sort of their strategy to whatever all the, all the problems and all the, 
actual violence and actual um, pedophilia and actual sort of sexual mis misconduct that's right now uh, just exam uh, <laughs> on, on showcase by the left, they try to manufacture situations where it's on the right just to disorient uh, the public. Yeah. Well, usually, you know, like in the, a few years ago when the Tea Party was, was very active, they'd always see some sort of person uh, stirring up trouble. And then you find out that there's some sort of uh, employee oh, yeah. union goon uh, yeah. that gets identified later on. You know, they're, they're, they got the, not, the Nazi thing going or whatever to try to discredit the, the Tea Party. And then you find out, well, well they're, you know, they're a shill that, that's been put up there. So it's, uh, we're, we're see, it's, you know, still seeing a lot of that. Um, so your Facebook account banned or was banned for a while? Did you get it back or is it still banned? No, you know, they, uh, this is the first time. Um, and I, I really don't know how many uh, voters I was winning. I mean, I'm not really doing the traditional phone making thing, obviously. Um, but Facebook, uh, yeah, I don't know. They, they banned me until literally a day after the election. Uh, for no reason. They, they can't provide justification. Um, one of the, uh, we did reach out to uh, sort of one of the people in that department over at Facebook. He said, yeah, this does seem like an unfair um, suspension. You didn't violate any community standards. We're going to try to fast track this and get you back on. And that was uh, a week and a half ago now. So they're, they're really, um, they're pretty happy uh, keeping me off until after the elections, which is yeah. Also very, very frustrating because Facebook is uh, my biggest platform. And, you know, that's sort of, that's uh, largely also what happened to uh, Milo and Twitter. Twitter right. Biggest platform. And they, um, these very, unfortunately, uh, these are some of our biggest lines of communication right now. And they're run, uh, run by the left. Mm -hmm. And so we, we're giving them a very unfortunate ability to directly police um, opinions they don't like. Yeah, I think that's, that's very scary because we're so reliant on social media for lots of things that we do, uh, not just opinions, but business and things like that. And uh, Google, Facebook, Twitter, uh, all those people can, can really, uh, by, by managing the, uh, the data and how it's collected and how it's displayed, can really change the whole, the, the whole conversation in a situation. So it's, it's kind of a uh, interesting thing. How about Twitter? Are they do you still have a do you still have your Twitter account? Or? I, I do, but I have never really uh, liked Twitter. I feel like it's better for I mean yeah, it's better for for uh, very uh, concise comedians and news sources. Um, mm -hmm. I I tend to yeah I, I uh, the way I write it's hard to keep things in 160 characters. Yeah. So I mean I. Uh, and my, my base on Twitter isn't as, as uh, robust as it, as it was on Facebook. But I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to slowly, uh, slowly get a handle on it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe next when you get when you get back live on Facebook, maybe you should get a uh, create a email opt in list. <laughs> so you're not so, so you're not so 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 much at the whim of Facebook. Yeah, uh, yeah it's interesting. I, I got I was in the middle of a discussion. Uh, during one of the debates, and I, I got uh, I got put into Twitter timeout. Uh, it was it was kind of interesting. I didn't I didn't really understand what happened, but then I figured it out once people started talking about it. So, you're working. You're what, what are you doing as far as the Trump campaign campaign these days? Because we're um, down the last few days. Well, you know, I was actually I was at a uh, Friends of Aid meeting last night, which is why I'm I'm still a little tired. It was a lot of fun. And Roger Stone, uh, do you know who that Roger Stone was our, our um, keynote speaker? Okay, no, no I, I recognize the name, but I don't know who he is. He's an uh, incredible sort of strategist from the right. He's uh, really been instrumental in helping the Trump campaign. Mm -hmm. So he, I actually, I asked him after his, uh, his, his talk largely revolved around, uh, he has a new book out, which he signed over to me. Here, I'll show it to you. Okay. I'll give him a plug. Um, so he's, he was largely discussing sort of the Clintons and uh, Bill Clinton's legacy of being a sexual predator. Uh, and, and uh, um, yeah, so he signed it over to me. I was oh, <laughs> happy about wonderful. it. Um, but I actually, I asked him about uh, after, after the, the talk, what sort of strategy we should implement on a, on a sort of individual basis. And, you know, at, at this point, there's not too much that we can, that we can really do aside from what we were mm -hmm. 
so helping to helping to spread the the actual information that the new the mainstream media is not covering exactly. about the campaign, uh, spreading the actual policies which the, uh, the which Trump has laid forward, which are at the country's advantage that the media is also not covering. Exactly. <laughs> um, and yeah, we I think we it's we just have to we we have very little time left, so that's it, there's not really time for a grander. Uh, Larger um, yeah, strategy, changing yeah. strategy at this point. Now, now we are, uh, like I said, we've been given uh, uh, great gifts here. Uh, thanks, thanks to Wiener and his uh, yeah. uh, his whole thing. And I, I was really, I'm, I was stunned that Comey actually did what he did on Friday. You know? So, uh, I, I think that the desertion of agents out of the FBI really uh, forced his hand on, on doing that. So, um, so after the election, what's next for you? <laughs> um, that's a good question. Well, uh, right now I am uh, ghostwriting a book for somebody uh, as a source of income, which is actually a lot more enjoyable than uh, um, my previous position. It pays a little bit better. I get to roll out of bed and sit at my computer and, and write it out. And um, I'm also working on a uh, working on a web series currently. Oh, okay. okay. And so the, the web series it's largely going to tackle uh being a conservative in a metropolitan area like new york <laughs> perhaps a, uh, it'll be a dark comedy <laughs> no 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 shortage of material now do you wear you do, do you wear your make america great again hat or do you uh, keep that in the closet <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, i i have um one hat of every of every color combination i uh, i i don't know i've i've worn them uh a couple times around New York. Half the time, I have to be in a ballsy mood to do that, though. Sure. But uh, when I have worn them in the past, you know, I actually I get a lot of smiles. Like people are um, oddly because it's such a taboo thing to do, and a lot of people in New York actually do secretly support Trump, and so sure. it's kind of funny. Um, and and again, like when I see somebody, which is a very rare occasion, when I see somebody in a uh, in a Trump hat, I mean, I get, I get pretty excited. I get happy. Sure. So there, there's a, uh, yeah, um, it's, it's fun. I mean, you know, there, there are definitely a lot more people in New York and a lot more gay people uh, who support Trump and who are keeping sort of mom about it. Sure, sure. Um, you know, you, uh, you wrote an article uh, a while back, or no, it wasn't that far back, uh, in The Advocate and uh, talked about some misconceptions that people have about gays. And I, I kind of want to delve into them. There were, there were five things that you mentioned in, in the article, and I wanted to delve into them. Uh, first one was being gay defines the entirety of our existence. Yes. Um, so you want me to uh, elaborate? Yeah, talk a little bit more about that, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, there, there's a notion that, that um, if, you're, if you're gay, if you're black, if you're... Uh, um, what else? Pretty much any minority that you have to vote Democrat because they're really looking out for your best interests. That, uh, first of all, that is that is the definition of bigotry, but that is an, a notion that the media loves to run with. Uh, mm -hmm. That you have to be crazy to be any sort of minority and vote uh, vote Republican. Mm -hmm. um, given given the last sixty years history of Democratic rule of big cities <laughs> and and the the tra absolute tragedy of the school systems in those schools, it's, it's amazing that you wouldn't vote Republican just on, based on that. It's, I mean, it's, it's absolutely crazy. And what, what um, even uh, Bill Clinton's policies have done to black communities is disgusting. Mm -hmm. He, uh, oh my gosh, I mean, his, his drug policies have led to uh, that incredible spike of um, black men in prison They've led to uh, many, many now um, fatherless homes in poor uh, black communities. They've, they've just, I don't know, they've, they've largely ripped apart many black family structures. And so then to say, oh, but they're, they're great for black people, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Um, and then uh, the Clinton's uh, policies with, um, with gays, I mean, he, he was, uh, I believe, I'm 90% sure here, uh, he started Don't Ask, Don't Tell, which was later repealed. Um, I believe by Bush. I could be crazy. I could be absolutely crazy. I, I don't remember. I, don't um, I believe it was repealed by Bush. 
Uh, so they've, they haven't been uh, great with blacks. They haven't been great with gays. Um, Bill and Hillary were both vehemently anti-gay marriage mm-hmm. uh, for, uh, actually up until very, very recently. Um, so yeah, to claim that there's, there's some sort of uh, advantage if you're black or gay or whatever else to vote Democrat, it's, it's just simply not true. And then in, in addition to sort of what they've done with uh, their failed gay and failed drug policies, um, they've like simultaneously expanded uh, the welfare base. Mm-hmm. And so now you have people who, uh, you have these poor neighborhoods, these crumbling poor neighborhoods that businesses are too scared to uh, bring, bring actual jobs to, uh, bring a, uh, what is it, <laughs> Walgreens or Dwayne Reed for people sure. to work at, whatever else. And then you just, you pay them welfare to keep them complacent and part of the, part of the large, ever expanding sort of hand of government. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, uh, if that's not oppression, I have no idea what is. And yep. people are uh, so blindsided that they, that they, for whatever reason, applaud it. It's, I mean, it's crazy to me. It, it's, um, it's frustrating. <laughs> yeah, uh, generational poverty, I think, is, is really uh, one of the things that are going on because most people don't, they, 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 their family has been in poverty for so long that they don't really know that there's another way, that there's a way to opportunity. Now, of course, there's always the, the unicorns that manage to get out of there. Uh, but for the vast majority of people, they're stuck. And they're stuck, you know, a lot of it is they're stuck because of the, the government handouts, as well as the as the horrible school systems. I, uh, 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 I'm i a big proponent of, of uh, charter schools. And oh, yeah. I know. I know that uh, your your mayor is you know basically has a war on charter schools. Uh, it's, de is a worst, easily the worst mayor New York has had. Um, he was. I swear he was only elected because his wife is black. Mm-hmm. Uh, and between that and Wiener being such a such a Wiener uh, <laughs> in elections, and uh, it's. I mean, it's it's astonishing. All the all the work that Bloomberg did to uh, decrease violence, uh, decrease uh, uh, crime. Um, clean up the city from homeless people, uh, which all these policies, they were incredibly effective. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we've seen uh, since Bloomberg took office, and then a lot of uh, Giuliani continued a lot of wonderful wonderful stuff. Um, Since de Blasio took office, he's managed to uh, reverse all the work that Bloomberg did, all the work that Giuliani did. It's, I mean, it's incredible. And it it just goes to show you... uh, how much damage um, a failed, uh, sort of a yeah, democratic failed policy? Yeah. Okay. I know it's kind of funny. They had that uh, news conference that said that crime in New York City was down. Uh, it's down except for murder, rape, and burglary. <laughs> kind of three important categories, but, <laughs> but overall it's down, but significantly up. So it's kind of a, kind of a, kind of you know again lying with statistics. So. Uh, next point you mentioned in that article was we're conservative because our parents were. Uh, mm-hmm. Were your parents conservative or? No. Uh, well, my, my mother is somewhat of an independent. My, my, uh, my father is very liberal. Um, but he's, you know, he's, uh, uh, I guess I, I'd be first generation. I was, I was born here. My father um, moved here when he was 18 from, uh, from Europe. And so I don't, I don't really think he's that. I mean, he'll watch the John Oliver show and then, uh, Think that it's it's uh, what everybody uh, smart needs to say um, politically, mm-hmm. and that is I mean that's that's true with a lot of people on the left. So my my views, uh, my personally my views, I arrived at through uh, just through my ways of research. Um, a lot of other people's, especially on the left, because I, I really don't think this happens on the right whatsoever. Um, or, I mean, I'm sure it still happens, but not to the same degree. But yeah, people on the left, they'll watch uh, things like The Daily Show or The John Oliver Show, and they'll, uh, they'll sit back and say, oh, wow, like, I understand uh, uh, politics now, and this is the intelligent opinion to have. And, I mean, John Oliver is a, uh, I think he's an absolute idiot. He has no idea how um, our government here works. He is very, very um, rarely a good point to make. Um, but he he says it with a smile, and so people people accept it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I was his his railing against charter schools, which you just brought up, was so um, just so so incorrect. I was I was shocked he was able to uh, 
lay out such a such a straw man argument for 20 minutes mm -hmm. um it's fr it's frustrating you know it, there's a lot of eye rolling i think so i don't know i, I actually i still get into um uh, argument uh very very uh, spirited arguments with my um with my father over some of these All things. that kind of stuff yeah you know that uh, the whole charter school thing a, a few months ago there was an article in the wall street journal and it was about a charter school in uh in new york city i don't know if you've read it it was a tale of two schools and, and it was a, a the, the charter school and the public school were in the same building mm -hmm. and they they played on the same playground they ate in the same cafeteria and the kids came from the same type of parents and the charter school just you know just knocked it out of the ballpark in terms of uh, academic performance. And the public school uh, was just horrible. And all the parents were trying to get their kids into a charter school and they couldn't, they couldn't. It was, it was a sad thing. Because yeah. parents, mean, are, parents are smart and they know. There's, there's more incentive for charter schools to succeed and to, uh, to actually educate their students. And in the general public school system, with that, that wonderful bureaucracy, there's very little there's very little incentive to actually do your job, I think. Um, you know that, yeah, you know there's a, a fixed amount of money coming in uh, with the teachers' union. I mean, I don't know. I, I went to a public high school for two years, and it was an absolute um, disaster, and I, I had to beg my parents to send me back to, uh, to private school. But um, the, especially in, in, uh, in Pittsburgh, where I'm from, the, the actual the charter schools, which are harder to get into, um, and then in New York, you know, uh, New York and Chicago, if you actually read some of these case studies and comparisons between the two, um, charter schools across the board, they blow uh, public schools out of, the, out of the park for just, I mean, I think the reason that they're, they're less part of uh, our very failed um, bureaucratic educational system that, that uh, is in dire need of reform. And it keeps going downhill, you know, like public schools, used to be, I think, when, when they were uh, controlled more by individual municipalities and towns, mm -hmm. uh, they were a lot more successful. And so the charter schools are almost emanating that earlier model back when even our public education in the U.S. was uh, some of the best in the world. Uh, so yeah, the, the more we get back to that, if we can, if we can, I mean, I don't know, I think a lot of, uh, a lot of the system needs to be torn down and rebuilt. And mm -hmm. uh, things like charter schools and, and initiatives like that sort of help achieve that. Sure, I do. I think, I think so. So point number three out of the five, conservatives are predisposed to bigotry. So that was one, one of the other. So. Oh, yeah, it's, you know, that's, that's one of their uh, wonderful talking points that they always say, oh, well, yeah, if you're conservative, you're racist, you're a big, um, you're bigot, you're homophobic. Uh, whatever else they want to, uh, I mean, Hillary Clinton, I mean, it was so funny because, you know, oh, I think a week after I wrote that article, in her speech, she said, that's, that was her basket of deplorable slide. And she literally uh, went through the list, oh, your uh, Trump supporter is racist, bigot, homophobic, um, which was kind of hilarious because that, that's become such a talking point mm -hmm. on the left. Um, and that was actually, uh, Reagan actually talked about that in An American Life. And he, he said that, uh, for, up until uh, the sixties, you know, the black people always voted Republican. Mm -hmm. It was that was considered sort of, because the Republican Party had has uh, historically done so much more for black people. Mm -hmm. and recently, even after after the left has the black vote, um, all their policies are incredibly uh, disadvantageous to to uh, African American households. And um, so, yeah, I mean, Reagan sort of remarked on um, in the 60s how all of a sudden the DNC got together and they said, okay, well, uh, we're, we're, we keep losing. Um, how can we win? We need to start calling, uh, let's just call Republicans racist. Let's see how that goes. Yeah. And so off the board, uh, people running who never, um, have never said anything racist, have never put forward any sort of uh, policy that, that emanates any degree of racism, uh, they'd be debating their their Democratic opponent, and they'd be like, "Okay, well, here here are my plans. Here's my idea for education. Here's my idea for um, uh, on on um, I don't know ex expanding X, Y, and Z." And then the the Democrat would turn to him and say, "Well, I don't really have uh, too many plans, but at least I'm not racist." And across the board, uh, it, it's very weird because you can read in in other uh, sort of biographies. 
that that started just happening to Republicans, and mm -hmm. uh, it it worked. And uh, for no virtue other than name calling, mm -hmm. uh, the left pulled in the black vote, and then uh, the Republicans uh, they got together. They got very nervous. They were like, "What are we going to do? We need. Uh, we lost our." Uh, <laughs> despite uh, helping the African American community um, for what, a century, a century and a half, however long it's been, um, uh, they, they deflected. So then they, that's actually when they started um, catering to uh, the Roman Catholic vote. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The, second, uh, the second biggest minority. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pretty, uh, the identity since the 60s, the left has loved playing the identity politic game. And I think it's, it's served them very well since the 60s. And at this point, uh, a lot of people from the right and left are, are kind of sick of it. Yeah. I, um, think in, I think in many ways, uh, Republicans uh, have been very poor at the, the word game. Uh, they, they get outmaneuvered uh, in, in many ways. I think that's part of the reason why Trump is, has been so successful. Uh, we'd like him to be more successful. Uh, but he he's already he's already branded himself that it's almost impossible to, to rebrand Trump uh, in, in many ways because he's he's already done it to himself so, so far. You know, in the '60s they had the uh, Democrats. Uh, the, one of the, the worst things that ever happened to the black community was the War on Poverty and the Great Society by Lyndon Johnson. I mean that that has turned into uh, generational poverty. It's it's, yeah. it's it's a it's, it's a horrible thing that. Uh, we haven't recovered from so it's, it's kind of a, a sad thing to happen so so point number four uh gay conservatives can't be fun um you know I, I, <laughs> so, are you are you fun <laughs> I'm, I'm incredibly fun uh a, a lot of yeah a lot of that and there's this sti uh, stigma again um perpetuated by the left and, and people on the right are very uh sort of um, reserved or whatever else, but it, to, because we don't play the identity politics game and because we, uh, as Trump has shown, uh, uh, we're willing to speak our mind for the most part, that naturally does lend itself better to, I think everything from, from art to culture to entertainment to comedy. I mean, there's, there's a reason that uh, Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, Louis C.K. are refusing to play on liberal college campuses now, mm -hmm. because that that sort of liberal mindset has become so hostile to even liberal comedians. Yeah, uh, yeah. Trigger warning: safe spaces. Oh it's my. ridiculous. I mean, a lot of you know, Gavin. I was talking to Gavin and Milo about this recently, and both of them think that we're going to see a. Uh, I'm not this optimistic, but both of them think that we're going to sort of see a decline in that by the end of the year, and it's going to completely drop off because it has gotten so ridiculous to the point that, I mean, there's, there's a university that uh, was, has a, what is it? They have a trigger warning because one book had uh, mentioned uh, holes, small holes, and uh, there's some sort of phobia about, uh, well, I mean, another one uh, out of uh, one of the Ivy League universities, they're trying to shut down a class on, on English literature classic English literature because all the writers were white. <laughs> um, so it's, they, I, all of this has been taken to such an absurd, almost, uh, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's a joke. The entire thing it became such a joke. Yeah. I mean, when university uh, administrators have to police col uh, Halloween costumes, that is, that is, that is insanity. That is total insanity. I mean, that's the time you're supposed to be, incredibly outrageous and uh and uh you know just totally off the walls halloween yes. I, uh, <laughs> I i you know when i uh, and this I'll, I'll age myself so when i was going to halloween parties a long time ago uh this was when clarence thomas was uh had the, his hearings and of course you know that that was how, how horrible that was and you know, <laughs> all the lies that were made up about him and all that stuff but everyone had at a halloween party had a aluminum foil long penis because remember he called it long dong silver. Everyone <laughs> had one of those. It was just hilarious. <laughs> but I mean, you know, that, I mean, it's kind of like you know that's part of Halloween is to be outrageous, to have fun, you know, kick back and and uh, you know not worry about cultural appropriation, all that. I, I know it's it's uh, 
and, and it still it still should be. I mean, I think. Um, I mean, I've I've tried to be mildly uh, uh, disregarded each year. Last year, I had a headdress and I uh, Native American headdress, and I wore a um, a suit, and I was a uh, casino owner. Oh, um, it was mildly funny. And then this year, I had a little Chinese um, uh, outfit and uh, with dollar bills sticking out of the hat, and it was currency manipulation. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. The weird, or the, I think the silliest thing is, you know, even with the, with the Redskins logo and that thing, and then, um, what are the other, yeah, uh, Native American issues in general, 90, when, when they were actually pulled, when Native Americans pulled, 90% really don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is this, this issue of, oh, we're offending other cultures. The same with, uh, uh, Japanese people. When, because, you know, kimonos right now, if you're white, you can't wear a kimono. Mm-hmm. Um, and people pulled in Japan, like, again, like 90, actually, no, with, I think with the Japanese, they said, wow, this is really cool. They're, <laughs> they're like wearing our stuff there. Um, so it was like 100% approval rating uh, for whoever wants to wear a kimono to wear one in, in America. And I, a lot, the, this myth, it's, it's really just a myth that's, I think, starting uh, uh, or spiraling from, from largely... Uh, yeah, liberal arts schools in America, mm-hmm. where you have a fifth wave feminist professor who says, "Oh, uh, there's this patriarchy going on," and and borrowing any sort of uh, if if the cafeteria serves Vietnamese food, that's appropriation. If you uh, if you wear uh, this sort of clothing, you're stealing from this culture. In in Western society, where we've historically we've we've given to cultures, we've borrowed from cultures. That's that's how how human beings is sort of advance and how, uh, it, I mean, it adds a depth to culture in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's so, it's so crazy. And I think anti-intellectual, what a lot of these, these people are trying to preach right now. Now, uh, Lucian, have, have, are you, have you been guilty of the uh, crime on New York City sub- subways of mansplaining? Explaining or spreading? We got a lot. Man spread, man spreading. I'm sorry, man spreading, man spreading. Not yeah, man spreading. Um, that's a whole other thing I've been accused of. <laughs> I, I occasionally. Uh, <laughs> I I mean I don't know. It's it's another weird. Uh, I I haven't seen those ads for a while. But that was another very weird sort of sexist uh, campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's weird. It's also it's crazy to me that we've we've mainstreamed. We've absolutely mainstream sexism if it's against men. Yeah, um, well, yeah, and and people actually got tickets for that in New York City. It's amazing. It's crazy. It's it's absolutely yeah. I, <laughs> you know, I could I could go on a rant about about how how ludicrous all this stuff is. I mean, I I feel like we've we've uh, I don't know. We've sort of gone crazy, or the left has just gone so crazy. Um, mm-hmm. And. and uh, it's amazing to me that people are so accepting of these crazy views too. Uh, yes. Well, I, I think that's probably the, um, you know, when we get back, you know, talk a little bit about the college campuses is, is that <clears throat> my generation has, has allowed in some ways for this to go on on college campuses, because to a certain extent we control the money, we control what, what happens and it just kind of being tolerant. Oh, that's not too bad. Oh, okay. Well, fine. That's fine. They can't be too bad. And now we're getting to this lunacy that you see on, and, and it's pervasive. I mean, when you start talking to people and you start telling people, do you know, understand what's going on at your, that, that you have to sign, have a form signed out to kiss someone on college campus. <laughs> I mean, which, which, how how is that actually going to play out? They, so you have to you have to um, and some ca- campuses you know they're they're requiring like written consent. Exactly. Yeah. You you have to bring these forms to uh, to the, uh, a party and then have yeah if you meet a girl there you you have to sit down and do paperwork uh, before you kiss her. I mean it's 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 terrible. And, and they, there there are people who I've seen interviews with people who who are like oh yeah that's not too much work that's fine like. <laughs> Um, it's, it's just, there's, there's such a degree of lunacy that I, I feel like if this, if this were written about in a, in a uh, dystopian novel, uh, 15 years ago, everybody would think it's the most hilarious, ludicrous thing mm-hmm. uh, ever read. And it's, it's, again, it's, it's craziness being mainstreamed right now. Well, well I think that. I think these forums will, will, uh, cause a large increase in virginity on college campuses. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can kind of lose a moment. You know, some people have a hard time getting a date, so that's not good. It's going to make it really tough. <laughs> so, so lastly, how many of there are you? You say there are a few. Point number five was there are a few gay conservatives. How, how many of there are you? Um, well, you know, I, uh, that's a good question. I, I um, don't know how accurate any sort of uh, consensus data is. I do think, I think right now there was a, um, or where did I read it? Uh, according to the ad, there was a recent article in The Advocate. According to them, it's just a quarter uh, gay people who are um, publicly sort of supporting Trump. Still a quarter is, is more than I would tend uh, to think would publicly come out and say, yeah, yeah like, we'll, we'll tell So I don't know. I, to be honest, I think, I think, um, I think there are probably more gay people supporting Trump that are, are recorded currently. I don't think there are a lot supporting Hillary. I don't, I really don't see, uh, I guess it'd be probably in terms of actual votes. I think it's going to be somewhere like 50, 50. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to be a pretty, pretty even split. Um, so I don't know. I, I and you know, Donald Trump has, I mean, he, he just went on stage with the, uh, the LGBT uh, Trump rainbow flag, uh, which is wonderful. And he has been the most pro-gay uh, conservative candidate I think we've ever seen, um, oh, yeah. uh, which is, which is absolutely incredible that finally, um, again, my big thing is the second the, the right tears down a lot of the left's identity politics that they're putting up, mm -hmm. uh, the better off will, will be and it's it's also it's crazy to the uh i mean he also had what uh peter Thiel speak at uh, right which was an amazing uh monumentous event yeah um, and i don't know I, I it's it's crazy to me that we still despite despite uh everything that sort of trump has done and and all, he really hasn't put set forth a even one single anti-gay policy so it's crazy first of all that that uh, left-leaning publications are claiming he has, because mm -hmm. they're, they're just uh, speaking from this echo chamber and they haven't actually read any of this policy. Um, and then uh, that they're also saying, oh, well, he's, he's just pandering. It's like, um, he's, he's, had, uh, he's had a record of employing uh, gay people very close to him. Uh, mm -hmm. he's, um, he's never done anything anti-gay, whereas Hillary, her entire record, again, up until recently, was, uh, was can be seen as very anti-gay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, she's she's been uh, historically always a proponent of um, or against same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas Trump, um, Trump, he's he's never like sort of he's never taken the same hardline stance that she has against it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. I, I think hopefully people are waking up to the uh, to the difference in in uh, f sort of narrative versus reality. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, the, I think the only reason she's uh, she's so she's had the, uh, the the good run she has is has she's been so supported by the uh, by the mainstream media. I mean, Donna Brazil had to resign today. Okay. Uh, so so finally, and more should there should be more fallout from that. So, uh, but. Uh, We'll, 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 we'll see how that ends. So we'll see how that ends. So, um, solution. Sometimes the old guy likes to find out a little bit more about his guests. Because uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you've been on my blog, we're, we're about virtues and vices. Mm -hmm. so, so we're going to get down to that question, that part of it. So what types of music do you like to listen to? Um, it's a good question. Uh, I, I don't know. It's a lot of hipster music, I guess. Uh, I, you know, I, in high school, I was uh, very into, I'm still into Bob Dylan. Uh, I like the Grateful Dad. Uh, so it, uh, what else do I like? Um, I don't know. You know, I've, I've pretty diverse. Uh, for the most part, it's, it's kind of uh, either folk or, or uh, jam band stuff or hipster generic hit, hipster uh, music. I also rap from the nineties. I love rap, ah. but I don't like the I don't like the newer stuff. I've never been a rap fan. <laughs> so, uh, what uh, what unhealthy foods do you eat? Um, what unhealthy foods? Uh, I don't know. You know, I I tend to be uh, I have a very red meat centric diet. Um, 
that's that's healthy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, aside from that, I yeah, I don't really um, I don't really know. Uh, so if you're if you're eating something really bad that you can say, okay, I shouldn't be eating this, what would it be? Oh my gosh! Well, I, I did finish a uh, an entire thing of. Uh, double stuffed Oreos the other night. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> but that's, that's rare. For the most part, I try to stay relatively uh, healthy. All right. Uh, what's your favorite trash TV show? Hmm. Um, that's a good question. Let me think here. Uh, you know, I don't watch, I don't really watch a lot of television to be honest. Uh, tell me, well, Mainstream television, I guess. I, I have been watching Westworld recently, which I, I've been enjoying. Mm -hmm. um, waiting to see where uh, where they take it. It's a lot of um, suspense right now with little payoff, but it's so that that, that show right now might be because it's it's not necessarily uh, that intellectual show, but it's I'm enjoying it. Okay, and uh, what alcohol do you like to drink? Uh, whiskey. Whiskey. Any kind of particular brand? Um. Yeah, I, I uh, there was a great whiskey called R1 uh, that I was into for a while. I don't mind, Bullet is pretty good. I like Bullet. Um, Johnny Walker. Uh, okay, all right. And uh, do you smoke a cigar? I, do I smoke a cigar? Well, I smoke a, I actually, I smoke cigarettes. I, I before I smoke cigarettes though, uh, I would smoke cigars. Uh, uh. I used to, you know, I used to uh, really enjoy that. As a freshman in college, actually, I, I was a big cigar smoker. I'd walk around campus with a cigar. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, the old guy's big into cigars. Yeah. So, uh, when you're being a bad boy, what do you do? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's a good question. Um... <laughs> I don't know. You know, I think I think uh, everything I do has a, a degree of mischief to it. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. I I think a, a lot of people would consider uh, just my my existence to be to be <laughs> objectionable. Um, <laughs> okay. okay. All right. All right, Lucian. Well, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for coming on this interview and spending some time with me, answering some, some of the questions and getting into the subject about what it's like to be a conservative who happens to be gay and address some of the, some of the myths and uh, some of the fallacies out there and some of the issues as, uh, as you see them. So this is Oris, the old guy from www.oldguytalks.com signing off with his guest Lucian and uh, we'll be coming back to you soon. Remember, create a kick-ass life. <laughs>